Yurag is a country on the planet of Terra, the main setting of Arknights. Yurag's name and government is largely inspired by their goddess Yuragandr. Because of the people of Yurag, or the Yuragian strong faith, the country is deeply religious. From in-game events and the operator files, we know that Yerag is a cold, snowy, mountainous region, with many calling it the Snow Realm. The clothing of most Yerag operators reflect the coldness of this region with their coats and scarves. Just don't look at Cliffheart, though, she's an exception. Yerag remains largely untouched by the catastrophes or natural disasters of Terra because of its geographical advantages. This also doubles in protecting the region from any potential foreign large-scale threats. However, despite these great benefits of protecting the region and its culture, this has led the country to be isolated from the world outside. Not because of its dangerous snowy weather that makes visitors not easily visit the country, but more of the fact that its denizens are too fearful of the world outside. Any sort of change brought to Yerag is almost seen as a threat on their way of life. Because of this, Yerag falls behind in terms of growth. The other nations around it have experienced dramatic change in all aspects of life while Yerag remains stagnant as the snow on the mountains. There was fear that the country would never be able to reach great heights because of their harmful mentality. Until one man changed it all. Silver Ash is the head of his family, the Silver Ashes, one of the three major families that hold control in Yerag. His real name, Enciodes Silver Ash, taking his surname as his code name while working under Rhodes Island. Born February 15th, his race is feline, with many motif referencing a snow leopard also seen with his siblings, Promanix and Cliffheart. Silver Ash is 192 centimeters tall, which is kind of funny when you also realize that his personal bodyguard Matterhorn is 10 centimeters smaller than him. He even has a pet falcon named Tenzin. Silver Ash's parents died in an apparent train accident when his siblings and him were much younger. Despite the evidence saying foul play from the enemies of their family, the ruling of their parents' death was just an accident. Silver Ash didn't let the death of his parents stop him, however. He instead used this tragedy to fuel his drive to do more for his family and others. Silver Ash took care of his siblings until they were old enough to look after themselves. With Cliff Hart, the youngest of the siblings, becoming a Rhodes Island operator as part of her agreement for treatment after being infected with Oropathy, while Pramanix became the Saintess of Yerag, essentially the voice of the goddess. Cliff Hart and Silver Ash maintain a healthy relationship, but unfortunately the same cannot be said about him and Pramanix. Silver Ash eventually leaves home for Victoria to receive education. Victoria being an open country with a vast culture unlike that of his home, this is where Silver Ash began to see the benefits that his homeland missed out on, becoming more acquainted with the outside world. Yerag was an isolated country whose denizens did not wish to move forward into the future as the other countries around it did. Silver Ash develops this drive to want his homeland to reach high levels of modernization, before it's left in the dust by the countries around it and the potential chance of foreign threats one day finding a way to overcome the snowy conditions. After finishing up his studies, Silver Ash came back home to Yerag to push his new ideas. First by establishing Carland Trade Company to establish trade between Yerag and the outside world. Yerag begins to benefit both economically and technologically, allowing Carland Trade Company to become the liaison between Yerag in the outside world. Silver Ash and his company are at the forefront of what makes Yara go from an isolated, small, and quaint country to acquiring growth, wealth, and technological advancement. Slowly, but surely, throwing the country into the modern world. He's been shown to be a well-respected individual from his comrades of the Silver Ash clan and employees. And although he's a capable and strong unit that works alongside with Rhode Islands, he's still kept at arm's length by them. Despite some of his units being used for Rhode Island operations and Rhode Islands lending aid to his sister, they're still air of untrust amongst each other, with Rhodes Island having to tread carefully to try to not conflict with Silver Ash's interests. Nevertheless, we work with Carlin Trade Company and their units are quite strong. But this begins to be a common issue with Silver Ash. He's a strong leader, well-respected, and intelligent, but he always seems to have a secret agenda up his sleeves. It's not easy to trust Silver Ash. I will be talking about the side story Break the Ice, so if you don't wish to be spoiled, then look away at this point. Despite all of the gains that came from KTC's establishment, there was a regional conflict. During the events of the side story Break the Ice, Silver Ash was brought to a meeting amongst the Tri-Clan Council. KTC's operation began to overstep and expand into the rival clan's lands, angering the opposing two clans. The leaders of the opposite clans, Ratatos of the Brown Tails and Artos of the Pale Roches, presented Silver Ash with a tough choice. To surrender his factories and mines and control over the region that his clan oversees, the valleys and the mines. 
And finally, for the Silver Ashes clan to withdraw from the Parliament of the Tri-Clan Council. Surprisingly enough, Silver Ash doesn't put up a fight. He almost hands everything over but under one condition. To have the Saintess of the Yuragandr take control of Yurag instead of having it split between the three clans. This proposition shocked everyone at the noble court. Because, well, why not have the Saintess be the leader after all? She is the voice of the goddess who knows what's best for the people. Silver Ash continues to display his brilliance throughout this side story. He leaves both of the leaders of the other clans dumbfounded with his grand plan, reciting lines from the grand scripture of the Yuragandr and using its meaning to help his case, putting the other two leaders in a tough position in front of the court of nobles. And finally, the other two clan leaders decide on letting the Saintess act as the lead for the country because, well, Magic going against the best wishes of the country and the voice of the goddess. Funny enough, despite being a operator to use an Arknight, Silver Ash is actually the antagonist of this side story. He orchestrated many of the events that occurred in the side story, such as having the Grand Elder be poisoned and having the opposite houses being framed for it, as well as having his ally Gnosis infiltrate the Brown Tail's household and weakening them from the inside, launching a coup d'etat to insert himself as the ruler of Yarag, plunging the country into a civil war. The side story itself deserves its own video since it's a good story on its own, but he does technically succeed in his plans to make the country proceed further with its modernization. His sister Pramenix takes up the role of being the new leader of the country, while Silver Ash himself still retains an important role in overseeing the direction of the country as the new head of the Tri-Clan Council. Silver Ash was willing to go as far as having his own countrymen die for his goals. Although he goes to extreme lengths, one can understand why he did so. After all, if it wasn't for him kicking off the events of Break the Ice, then the country would remain at its isolated and underdeveloped state. Yet Yurag was unfortunately stubborn in its current way of life and thinking. Silver Ash's fear of Yurag being in danger of its mentality came from a place of love for his country. Him wanting to rule for fun or a power trip wasn't necessarily the case here. But to justify killing the Grand Elder and others who took part in the Civil War, well, that's up for you to decide. Something that we all can agree on, though, is how determined Silver Ash can be when he wants his goals met. And to achieve his goals, well, if you're in his way, that's something to be really scared about. And although the Doctor in Rhodes Island put a stop to his plans, the outcome of Break the Ice ultimately ends in his favor. With Pramenex opening the country to let Yerag evolve, we soon start to see change in real time. Some great changes that have taken place since include utilizing imported technology to create a large monument of the goddess to honor her greatly, of course. Cable cars made to be used by tourists and all to visit the Great Temple with ease, helping with the tourism sector of the country. And the robust train system used to transport various goods and commuters alike, featuring a luncheon with burden beasts, a real experience to be had in Yurag. The question of if Yurag would ever open its borders wasn't really the issue. With Silver Ash pushing the country, it was bound to happen eventually. Now the real question is whether Yurag can stand up to any future foreign problems or fall. But Yurag, <laughs> those rustics are still at the start.